making sense of EU. Welcome to Making Sense of EU, a podcast where scientific research sheds light on the pressing issues of EU affairs. Making Sense of EU is brought to you by the Institut d'Etudes Européennes of the Université Libre de Bruxelles. This series on the challenges of liberal democracy in the EU is a product of the Horizon Europe research project Red Spinel and is co-funded by the European Union. My name is Maria Isabel Solevila and I am your host. Welcome back to Making Sense of EU. A new academic year brings new challenges and new topics and also new perspectives and questions about the European Union. This is the second season of Making Sense of EU and this time our podcast focuses on the challenges liberal democracy is facing in the European Union. To cut the ribbon on this new season, I have the pleasure to have with me today Ramona Coman, who is Professor of Political Science at the Université Libre de Bruxelles. Professor Coman has been President of the Institut d'Etudes Européennes for the past four years and previously its Director. She is Principal Investigator of two European research projects focusing on the growing dissensus of our liberal democracy and the challenge this represents for the EU. Welcome to Making Sense of EU. Hello. It has become obvious that democracy is not to be taken for granted. The Institute, under your leadership, has obtained two European projects dealing with the growing dissensus of our liberal democracy and the capacity of the European Union to face this challenge. Can you tell us more about the motivation behind these projects, and in particular Red Spinel? Yes, indeed. The Institute for European Studies has been awarded two European projects last year. One Horizon Europe, Red Spinel, and a Marie Sklodowska Curie joint doctorate network, Gem Diamonds. Both focus on the census of a liberal democracy, although with different aims, compositions, and structure. Now, the motivation behind these projects comes from both personal and institutional reasons. Of course, for me, Red Spinel represents the continuation of my research agenda on a more ambitious scale. But of course, getting a project in a highly competitive academic setting is also a source of recognition and institutional prestige. And what is also very important is that a project like Red Spinel provides us with the funding we need for the next three years to create an ambitious research environment. The Institute is the coordinating institution, but our Horizon Europe Red Spinel project brings together academics and non-academic partners across eight European countries. So it's really a collective effort to elucidate and understand this problematic of the European Union. Exactly. So this is a collective project. And what is also very, very important is that this is an interdisciplinary research project. So it brings together political science and law and also colleagues and universities, academic and non-academic partners from different uh, countries. And, and this is a trademark of the Institute. The Institute always looks and tries to look at realities from different perspectives, from different disciplines. Exactly. So this is also another uh, specificity of this project. This is one of the features of our institute for European studies is that we involve the three disciplines in our understanding of the European Union, in the understanding of the functioning of institutions and policies. And the project that I'm coordinating is an illustration of this interdisciplinarity. So I understand the census is the core concept sort of dominating the discussions. And it's for most of us often seen as a pillar of democracy, agreeing to disagree, Uh, is something that we feel very strongly about in open societies. But I understand it means something different in Red Spinel. I would like to know, because you're the one, and I know I have inside information, you're the one working on, uh, with other colleagues, in defining what the census means to the study that Red Spinel is putting together. It is important to say why the census. Because today, in the functioning of the European Union in debates on European integration, we see more dissensus than, than consensus. More dissensus on rights and values, more dissensus on the nature of democracy, on constitutions, and also more dissensus on, this is very important, on the liberal component of democracy. We might be on a turning point of the way the European Union defines its whole governance. Consensus is maybe no longer the way forward. Yes, you put the finger on something very, very important indeed. So today we see lots of debates on the foundations of the EU polity. 
Of course, one can argue that liberal democracy has been always contested. But for the European Union, we are at the turning point. What we see today is that claims against liberal democracy are no longer located at the extremes of the political systems, like in the 70s, in the 80s. They're becoming mainstream. They, they are exactly leading a wide range of actors not only populist, as I was saying, to contend that liberal democracy has become an empty shell and needs to be reinvented. So this is our understanding of the census. So fascinating times to be looking at this. We wanted to focus our project mainly on the European Union. And also there is a reason for that, is that the European Union is an actor promoting liberal democracy, but it is also a target for the ones who are contesting liberal democracy. So as a citizen looking at this from the other end, with not with a scientific hat, this could mean two things to someone like me. On the one hand, very scary prospects of losing the democracy and the values of democracy that we believe in, that we've agreed to believe in as a liberal democracy. But on the other hand, we've seen that with every crisis, the European Union tends to get stronger. So it could be an opportunity also for strengthening the polity. So are you looking at it this way as well in your project? Yes. So what we'd like to do is to, first of all, understand the nature of what we define as the census. So the census is, in our view, the expression of social, political and legal conflicts, which are driven by a variety of actors, political, social, legal actors, states or non-state actors, and conflicts which take place concomitantly, conflicts driven by a variety of actors who are seeking to maintain liberal democracy, to replace liberal democracy, or to dismantle liberal democracy to court. So we try to understand the nature of the census at different levels, member states, EU level, but also outside the European Union, and to go a bit a step forward in the sense that we would like to see how have EU institutional actors reacted, to, reacted this. to this or how they contributed, which is a different question, to this increased dissent. So this is the EU angle question. And then also to see what are the implications of this dissent for the policy instruments of the European Union, for the EU's capacity to act in different policies. And you only have three years to look at this. We have Your only three years, full. but this is the importance of our <laughs> amazing consortium and team of academic and academic partners. So we are not alone. <laughs> You're focusing on the European Union, but you want to also look a little bit further. Where? We have one argument, which is to examine internal dissensus or internal contestation and external competition. Also to see what happens outside the European Union, for example, in the neighborhood, where we clearly see a process of autocratization also present in the European Union, but this is another discussion. So we also try to see, for example, the influence of what happens inside the European Union outside, but also maybe vice versa, what happens outside the European Union, autocratization and the implication of this external contestation of the European Union for the internal and external policy. In terms of the contribution that both academics and non-academics in the project aim or hope to make with this research project, because of course there's the advancing research argument, which is in itself very important. We are a university after all, but there's also this idea of research that is focused on also impacting and contributing to society. Yes, yeah, so our first priority is, of course, to address the three questions which are at the core of the project. And then together, there is no a work division between academic and non-academic partners, but together to try to uh, produce theoretical innovation. And this is where we try to shed light on this concept of dissensus, which can be maybe used by other scholars for other topics. We try to think also from a more normative perspective and to provide some policy recommendations. We do this so it's not only theoretical and empirical research, it's also to see how our work in this project can inform policymakers to solve some of the problems that we will analyze for the next three years. In our activities, it's not only discussions and reflections between academics and non-academic partners, it is also a collaboration with civil society organizations, policymakers. This is also very, very important, so we don't want to present our findings at the very end of the projects. We try to advance a bit our reflections and to share our ideas with 
of course, actors concerned. You've mentioned that interdisciplinarity is very important, not only for the Institute, but for the project in itself. This means probably that you're looking into the census and into the instruments that European Union has to respond to this census from different perspectives. Uh, the consortium, what are the areas that different members are investigating? And if you have already some ideas, some discoveries that you can share with our audience? Yes. So at the beginning, I said that this project, Red Spinel, is a continuation of my own research agenda. And my research agenda is about EU's rule of law policy and the tools which have been defined over the past 10 years in order to solve the Euro, uh, rule of law crisis and the problems that we have observed in some EU member states. So part of the project, one of the work packages of the project is focused on EU instruments defending the rule of law at the EU level. I can mention some of them, the rule of law framework, Article 7 also, but also the European semester and the new resilience and recovery facility. So part of our work will be devoted to understanding the use, the creation of those um, instruments, also the use of those instruments by the European Union. And again, here all the partners are involved, but this specific work package is coordinated by our colleagues from Luis Guido Cardi based university based in Rome. And then we have also, as it was mentioned before, this internal external dimension and part of the project is focused and looks at what happens outside the European Union. So this is the neighborhood and in the neighborhood now, there are a lot of development. Exactly. So this is very, very important with consequences and important maybe effects also for the European Union. Essential so to look at it at a moment where some countries are applying for accession. Ukraine and Georgia and Moldova and other countries that we have studied also before Red Spinel and this project with a focus on Europeanization and the willingness to join the EU. So there is this work package which is focused on dissensus in the EU neighborhood and this is coordinated by the ULB and involves all the partners of our consortium. And then another area which is also key, really important for the EU polity is the census in the EU economic governance. This was a hot topic, I would say, in the context of the Eurozone crisis. A lot of instruments and policy tools have been designed in order to solve the problems and to save the euro, as it has been said. One of the other examples of how when a crisis helps the EU advance in policies. Yes, so here we will focus on some old instruments, the coordination of policies, very sensitive policies for EU member states, so the coordination in the European semester, but also on some more recent instruments like the EU's recovery and resilience facility. So, and then the last... And, and these are also elements that could help understand and trace back to where this census comes from, because the Eurozone crisis is one of those really boiling plates. The Eurozone crisis and what we call the rule of law crisis started at the same moment. And this is what is also very, very probably interesting. Probably intertwined. Intertwined, probably. This is something that we need to investigate, of course. Did you have other things that you wanted to add in terms of the different angles from which you are looking at the census? Because you were mentioning from the different work packages, different perspectives. And I think there is another work package that I should mention, which is also focused on the protection of fundamental rights within the EU through expert knowledge, citizens' participation, and judicial instruments such as, for example, strategic litigation before national courts, the Court of Justice of the European Union or the European Court of Human Rights. And this is also something which is fascinating because we will try to investigate this looking at three different areas, climate change, the rights of migrants and asylum seekers and LGBTQ plus rights. Three topics that generate a lot of dissensus. Yes, because I now to come back to what I said at the beginning, the project is about the census over liberal democracy. So we try to disentangle what we understand by liberal democracy and to have different policy areas and to really shed light on the census and then to go even further and to see what are the implications for member states, but also for the European Union. And but actually grounding into specific uh, case studies is going to make it really much more readable and understandable to, to everyone. We hope so. <laughs> Red Spinel started in, in the autumn of 2022. It's an ongoing process. It's been a year almost. What can we expect to see in the upcoming months? 
What is to be expected is a series of podcasts presenting our reflections and finding several academic contributions, academic articles and books, and also conferences. And I think presence, a separate presence in the media, in particular in the context of the European elections next year. So this is, I think, what we will uh, be able to share with our audiences uh, in the second year of the project. Maybe one last question before I let you go. What role do you think this whole context is going to play in the upcoming European elections? Well, I think it will be for us kind of, if I can say so, laboratory to study the census because we will see some of the points and some of the claims that we have been studying over the past years re-emerging or being emphasized by different actors. So it will be for us an opportunity to understand what's going on. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Before that I'm I let very you go? happy. No, that I'm very happy. The project is amazing, and I'm really grateful because we have amazing partners involved in this Horizon uh, Europe Red Spinel project, and also we have an excellent team here at the Institute for European Studies supporting the coordinator, the academic coordinator. So thank you for this. Thank you very much, Professor Ramona Kaman. There's really certainly a lot to think about, digest, and trying to understand. And it's so critical for the future of the European Union and in, of democracy in general to understand these processes. Thank you again for kickstarting a new conversation about our democracy and this new season of Making Sense of EU. We look forward to digging deeper into the different topics in the upcoming months. Until then, take care. Making sense of EU.